With this story, Anne Yong, please welcome Chris O'Brien. Chris O'Brien couldn't be here tonight. I'll be filling in for him instead. helps me quite a bit. All right. <laughs> On a bench at the Thousand Oaks Mall, my fiancé said to me, I think we should take a break. To which I replied, okay, I'm going to South Korea. <laughs> I had just graduated from CSU Channel Islands and I was unemployed, which is strange for a creative writing major. <laughs> Also, this was the beginning of 2009 in the midst of a major recession. Having so much free time gave me plenty of opportunity to pursue my hobbies, however. I was and am a fan of Japanese animation, or anime. As a teen, I could have been considered a weeaboo, that is, somebody who is obsessed with the Japanese culture but isn't themselves Japanese. In high school, I became known as the guy who wore a Sailor Moon t-shirt to class. And at the age of 25, I hadn't changed much. Yeah. <laughs> Job hunting is not fun, but watching anime online is. And the two crossed paths when I found a job board with positions being offered in Asia. It was there that I learned that South Korea had launched a massive undertaking during which it would hire hundreds upon hundreds of native English speakers to teach English as a second language to their elementary and high school students in Seoul, the capital. This became an obvious opportunity for me to not only live in Asia, but also it would solve the riddle of my fun employment, which had become quite a problem. My fiance was becoming increasingly annoyed with me as she worked longer hours to cover our rent and while I applied for jobs with the same charisma I showed while doing the dishes. The thing is, I didn't know much about South Korea. I'd heard of kimchi. I could say hello in Japanese, konnichiwa, but I couldn't say it in Korean. All I knew was that it was in the general vicinity of Japan and that it would give me an answer to the complaint I heard most often. Why aren't you trying? Perhaps I was only trying to convince myself when I told her that I was going to come home a better person one year later and that this was my way of saying that we would be fine. And I really did believe that. And I thought about it in good spirits on the 12-hour plane journey over to South Korea. It was on the third day of orientation that I'd realized I'd maybe made a terrible mistake. <laughs> the university campus we were stationed at was beautiful and comforting in the same way an episode of Black Mirror is. <laughs> there was a Domino's pizza on site, and that's where I learned that potato and mayonnaise and corn are popular toppings amongst the university <laughs> students. For breakfast, I was served kimchi and rice, and while on the phone with my fiance, as I complained about my lack of access to breakfast cereal, she cried, and I don't think it was about that. <laughs> Later in the evening, a group of foreigners like myself gathered in the courtyard, <laughs> and several of them played the ukulele, the ukulele being my least favorite instrument. <laughs> this was my second realization that I'd maybe made a terrible mistake. After a long week of crash coursing our way through how to be an English teacher, I was assigned to a small school near the center of Seoul and taken to in and introduced to three women who would be my co-teachers. We all hoped you'd be nice and handsome, said the youngest. <laughs> as much as I had fooled myself up until that point, and believe me, I did, there was no fooling myself then. I was undoubtedly going to let these women down. <laughs> And then I saw my apartment. A twin bed, a small desk, and a mini fridge tucked neatly beside a counter with a sink atop a washing machine next to a bachelor brand hot plate, all tucked within a 12 by 12 room. There were glow-in-the-dark stickers shaped like stars on the ceiling, my favorite being one on the door that simply read, Hey, girl. 
There are bars on the windows and a view of the scenic alleyway, but there was no television to watch anime. I came to learn that the name of the building was Song Castle. I would be the prince who lived in a castle. <laughs> After one week left to my own devices in my new neighborhood, the only familiar comforting symbol of Pizza Hut, wherein I learned that shrimp is also a popular topping, <laughs> I realized that I hadn't once even considered the real reason why I was there. The kids, students, oh shit, I was going to be a teacher. <laughs> Repeat after me, my name is Chris. I came here when my, I lost control of my life and Oh yeah, I thought you were Japan. <laughs> I became increasingly worried that the first impression these young minds were going to have of a language that their government thought so important they flew me out, paying for my flight and accommodation along with 500 other strangers. It's going to be me, a 25 year old whose Main concern at that moment was finding a Sailor Moon poster to match the decor in my apartment. <laughs> I had met a few people during orientation that I would come to consider friends. And it was after a night of one of many of pouring my heart out about how miserable I had become. One of them took me aside and bluntly told me, Chris, you just have way too much baggage to handle. <laughs> I realized that I either change or risk prolonging this self-made dark timeline of misery that in anime terms would be considered a sad ending. Mm -hmm. It's February 2010. My fiance had just come to visit me for a week. Way back in August, it was something I had been very much looking forward to, but as we took in the sights, ate live squid at a fish market, and then said our goodbyes. There was no fooling myself. We were no more, and she left as an acquaintance. Thus began my crash course into becoming an adult. I would have to learn how to say hello in an entirely new language and in a new way to the world. In Korean, Hello is on young Asio. This new outlook on life became my mantra after one fateful night at a Korean barbecue joint. I had wanted beef tongue to throw on a grill, but instead was given a bowl of rice. Because I pointed to my own tongue repeatedly like I was having a seizure and this was interpreted as the idiot foreigner is starving. <laughs> so I enrolled in a Korean language class. I also began making a timeline of the choices that led me to be there. And I realized that I hadn't really been making any choices at all. My way was a series of yes, no decisions without context. If the opportunity was presented to me, I went with it. I was living off this post-grad high that rewarded me with all of the benefits of being able to ignore the consequences, leaving others to pick up the pieces of broken promises. About a month before my tenure as a teacher ended, I'm on the phone while riding the metro train home. A Korean man who clearly had had too much soju after a raucous night out approached me. Do you speak Korean? He asked, and I responded in Korean. A little. Oh, you're in Korea. You should speak Korean. The man said over and over again for the entire ride. He's holding onto my shirt sleeve with a grip that says he wants to throw me out of the train and onto the tracks. And I'm asking myself what tuxedo mask would have done in this situation. <laughs> Tuxedo mask being the love interest of fellow hero in Sailor Moon. But I did nothing. That man would become the face I would see whenever I thought of allowing my pre-2009 self to reemerge 
like a great evil thought vanquished only to return in season two. <laughs> I gave notice that I would be leaving Seoul, and the staff threw me a going away party. They seemed all too thrilled to be hosting it. <laughs> Despite the freedom to choose anywhere in the planet to go next, including Japan perhaps, I chose to return to California. Part of me knew that I needed another shot, where I bungled it so badly. I knew that before I left Korea, however, I would need to define what exactly my way of doing things is. Unlike the year 2009, when the definition had yet to be written, today I can define it for you. My way is a work in progress. Chris O'Neill. Chris O'Brien couldn't make it, and his story was terrible anyway. <laughs>